Bird control has been in the headlines around Australia recently as communities search for more humane and effective ways of dealing with airborne assaults. In some places, birds are simply a nuisance, but in agriculture they can and do cost hard cash. Right now it's a crucial time for the wine industry, with the fruit for much of this year's vintage ripe for the picking. It's a race against time to beat the birds with the help of some new technology. Late summer in the Hunter Valley and preparations at Tyrrell's Vineyard at Pocolban are well underway to harvest this year's crop. 98 looks like a uh, pretty good vintage. We're, we're lucky, Peter. We had a, a good start to the season, good rain, September and October. Uh, the heat just prior to Christmas set them back a little bit, but I would think uh, a good average crop, perhaps on the Shirar a little bit more. His great-great-grandfather planted the first vines here in 1858 and Tyrrells remains the oldest family company in Australia, still making wine. The water coursing through this system will soon give way to the juice of premium grape varieties which have helped establish the Hunter's international reputation for soft, full-flavoured wines. We'll crush somewhere between four and four and a half thousand tonnes. Um, about three quarters of that from here in the Hunter. On the other quarter will come from our vineyards in South Australia and, and in Victoria. From now until harvest is a critical, even tense time for the fruit. and that tension's underscored by the sporadic gunfire punctuates an otherwise peaceful valley this time of year. The blasts are aimed at birds who not surprisingly find the taste of this ripening fruit just as tantalising as the vignons do. Birds have always been a problem. Um, you know, sweet grapes are pretty attractive to, to most sorts of birds from starlings up to ducks actually, the ducks love them. And what sort of losses were you facing for the birds? Just how how damaging were they? Well, there's a couple of ways. You get a physical loss of the fruit that they eat. Um, you then get a decrease in quality. Uh, some birds, the parrots and crows, will, will pull a uh, bunch off. Uh, but the little ones, things like silver eyes, they'll come in and actually peck at the individual berries. And where you've got a tight bunch, you get a couple of berries broken, the juice runs down inside the bunch, and suddenly the whole bunch will go rotten. We, we're the best wine, uh, we're the, one of the best wine growing areas in the, in the country or the world here. We have beaten the world more than anywhere else in Australia. And uh, but you can't make uh, great wine with, with the birds eating it. And we Murray Tyrrell gets a bird's eye view of this problem starlings. from his home overlooking some of the most valuable vines on this estate. Certainly this is our, where all our great wines are made on this flat. You can see how well, well the vineyard looks compared to the rest of the area. And we just can't afford to have have the birds eating them. We've got to have clean fruit. There's a big mob of starling gone in there my house there now. Down here uh, is so where we make some of our uh, best Chardonnay. Uh, it usually goes in about 47. Um, well, Tyrrells are fairly famous for their Chardonnays and uh, I reckon they're, they're probably some of the best Chardonnays in the world. So obviously this is, if you're going to protect any part of the show, it's oh, well, these vines. My word, now we, we do take a little bit more care with these vines uh, and that's why we we are uh, looking towards these scarers because the birds do quite a deal of damage around here as you can see here and that's the damage you can do and then of course if it rains it makes it even worse because you get a lot of mould in there. And just uh, to what extent could damage like this affect the yield? We'd be losing three to four tonne in this area, you know, just in this area alone along the edges here. So. The days of relying on silent sentinels like these to be effective against birds are about as passe as porphyry pearl. And the, the traditional forms of control um, have basically been gas guns or, or shotguns. Uh, as this area and, and many of the other viticultural areas of Australia become a bit more closely settled, um, we've got to look for alternatives. 
Um, in the 80s, there were chemical alternatives, and I think like anyone in agriculture, we're all trying to get away from as much of that as we can. Another strategy has been to use netting. A small vineyard not far from Tyrrell's almost completely covered its crop this year. And as you can see, it doesn't seem to scare off the more determined predators. Indeed, some of them even became entangled in the netting. Oh, we've tried everything from shooting with the shotguns to, to the, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, gas guns and uh, the sonic, they had scares out with these sonic beams coming out of them and uh, that's all been waste of money. Their search for a cleaner, more humane, yet effective solution to bird strikes led them to an electronic deterrent system, the Phoenix Whaler. The unit and up to eight extension speakers can be placed where the birds are a problem. Predator and distress calls and electronic sounds are played at programmed intervals. and virtually bounced in a random pattern around the paddock. Now, I'm not sure how, how big an area it, it will cover. I think it might cover more than they're saying it will, but they're like anyone with any chemical, they're all on the safe side at the moment selling this, but I think it might be better than even better than they're, they're telling us it is. The whaler was originally devised in Britain, upgraded in Canada to scare off everything from crows to coyotes, and now it's being fine-tuned for Australian conditions. As you'll see later, it's even doing the trick with kangaroos. We have um, hawks and also we're putting in um, starlings, crows and a number of other, of other birds that they're having problems with down there. And we have them in these little um, boards or chips and we simply program the unit with these uh, chips for each application that we send this system out to. And, um, no system that we send out really is the same program. Where do you want it here, Bill? Just about here, it'd be fine. Yeah. Last year yeah, we'll we left a unit here for the 97 vintage and uh, Tyrrell's trialled that unit okay, and they were more than started. pleased with the um, results that they achieved. Um, to be able to program in the sounds into this, this machine uh, that do scare the birds away um, is a tremendous alternative for us. It's cost effective um, and it's, um, it's no real hassle with our neighbours. If we press the green button you see we can go through what sounds are in there. For example, that's the starling. We've also got the shotgun blast. Yeah, right. You've got noisy miners and so on and so on. And then you get to your hawks. So now the system's already programmed, so we're ready to lift it up onto the uh, stand. And on the stand, we like to have the unit, if possible, around about 30 centimetres above the um, plateau of the vines, in this case. We recommend that the unit goes in at least six weeks before the fruit starts to show any colour and, um, or any attraction to the birds coming in. These are for the speakers that we've already got set up around the uh, vineyard right. and that creates the surround sound because what you're finding is the sounds are coming out of these speakers here uh -huh. and at the same time they're rotating around the um, remote speakers. So the birds don't get used to, to a sound that's coming from the one spot all the time. Oh, it's makes a bit of sense, it's yeah. rotating from speaker to speaker at various intervals, at various durations. Yeah. There are similar systems already operating in Australian agriculture with varying degrees of sophistication and success. Though probably few with the potential to make the sort of savings this three and a half thousand dollar unit can make in this particular paddock. You see, when the birds do their worst here, they can wreck or downgrade the quality of up to half the crop. And when you consider that these premium quality Chardonnay grapes could be worth up to two thousand dollars a tonne, 
you're looking at potential losses of up to $100,000 in this 25-acre vineyard alone. Two wines largely that's protecting of VAT 47, which is our top Chardonnay, and the wine really that started Chardonnay in Australia. The other one, and probably the most important for this area, is VAT 1, which is our top Semillon. In 1973, VAT 47 was the first Chardonnay fermented and matured in New Oak in Australia. And I uh, remember we put that in the Brisbane show the first year and got six points out of 20. Now what you've got in the slops bucket at the end of a big night will probably get eight or nine. And it was only because the judges here hadn't seen it. Here in the Lower Hunter and the Colburn area, we make the best semolons in the world. Uh, there's no one anywhere can get anywhere near us. They're wonderful, fresh, young wines, but have that tremendous ability to age, and, and I've seen them 30, 40 years old, still with freshness and a wonderful development of flavour. So, very, very important part of the distinctiveness of this area. Tyrrells won't know until later this year just what impact the new systems had on the taste of the latest vintage, but they're already prepared to toast its success. This one, there's no, there's no uh, way that the birds, they just disappear as soon as it's turned on. That's the best thing that's ever happened to us. This is the sort of thing we need to be doing more of. And I think, you know, it, it's vineyard application, but orchards, anything where birds cause damage, uh, this has got to have tremendous application. For example, we're doing one now for um, sunflowers. And in that system we'll have, um, well they're having trouble with uh, glass on the sunflowers. So with that system we'll also put in there the um, sulphur crested uh, cockatoo. And um, down the track if they could become a problem we simply go into the program and, um, pro and then we can put that into the system. Phil Vandry runs this seed research farm on the outskirts of Toowoomba. He and his team go to great lengths to ensure a successful harvest. Uh, the birds hit them very hard and they'll take 100% if they're allowed to. Unless we deter them in some way, they'll, they'll actually clean the blocks right out. We've used um, shotguns to deter them. We use propane gas guns as well. Um, we use um, a fishnet type netting. And um, in recent, recent times we use the Phoenix deterrent system, which is a part of our management tool now, um, together with shotgunning and the, the propane gas gun. On a research farm here, if we don't get yield, we lose massive amounts of data. Um, it affects both the yield and also the dry down of the plant once the, once the birds take the seed out of the plant. And the effort we put into plant comes to nothing. Having done the trick on galahs, the unit was further modified to tackle the second wave of invaders, green and scaly breasted lorikeets. Once it's set up properly, you still have to use it as a management tool, you still have to shotgun a little bit and, and use a boom gun in the beginning to um, condition the birds to, into believing that the shotgun blast on the, on the system is real. Um, but once it's set up, we can basically forget it. We hope it will be a long-term thing that they don't actually get used to it, but in time will tell, we'll find out that. But in this first season, this first year, it's, it's done a wonderful job. Um, we're just finishing harvesting, harvested three blocks of hybrids and Overall, probably about 5% damage, which is, which is nothing really, compared to what we have had in the past. At Denman in the Hunter Valley, hobby farmer Trevor Woolley set the system a completely different challenge. I had a lot of uh, kangaroos coming down onto this paddock, um, taking the green pick when it was very, very dry in winter and they're also getting into that uh, tree lane over there uh, and giving the young eucalypts a lot of curry. Uh, nearly, nearly killed a lot of them. Now, what were the options to, to try and scare them off? Well, yeah, shooting them uh, is, is the only other option, really, um, uh, apart from putting out buckets of feed. I mean, uh, you had to scare them off. Last winter, he installed a unit fitted with a powerful strobe light. It actually changed their pattern of, of um, migration each night. They, um, they tended to 
come across this paddock and across over into that paddock, uh, now they're in the habit of going around the back of you. Um, and even you know, four or five months later, they're still travelling via a different route. I'm, I'm happy for them to be up in the back paddocks um, on the native pastures. Uh, this paddock has got a bit of improved pasture. It's uh, a valuable grazing paddock and, and I didn't want them taking all the grass and I didn't want them taking the trees. Uh, we just planted. Now what do you think is getting them? The light, the sound or the combination? I, th I think it's the combination. The, the sound, if you turn the sound on and shield the light, they prick their ears up and they look around. Um, the light, uh, particularly in this paddock, it, it's, it's a bit of an amphitheatre and it, um, it, it seems to, to scare them, that, that light. They, they don't just like coming here. There's something about it. Well, that's the whole idea of the system. The system, you create a, um, a zone that you're saying, hey, you birds, we just don't want you in this area. Keep out. And that's how it operates. It's not a scarer. It is a deterrent. This is the sort of thing that, the type of technology that, that right across the board we've all got to look for, and I think in all forms of agriculture. Um, as I say, it's clean. Um, it doesn't really disturb anyone um, and it's pretty cost effective.